Welcome to the house of God as this morning we get to take a look at what Jesus does for us and giving us exactly what we need himself. This morning we'll follow the order of service printed for you in the bulletin and we'll begin with the opening hymn. Please stand. As we'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, by the waters of baptism you have clothed us in the robe of your Son's righteousness and have given us a new heart to hate sin. Preserve us in this saving faith and hear us as we lift our voices in songs of praise for your unfailing power and love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Our first reading for this morning from the book of Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah directs the Israelites' eyes to the great shepherd Jesus, who would bring salvation and safety to all who believe in him. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my flock. You have driven them away. You have not taken care of them, but I will certainly take care of you because of the evil things you have done, declares the Lord. I will gather what is left of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their pastures. They will be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them. They will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. Listen. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch who will reign wisely as king and establish justice and righteousness on earth. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteousness. That is God's word. We'll continue with him 380.
second reading for this morning from God's Word is Ephesians chapter 2. Jesus has given you access to God the Father and unity with each other. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. He made the two groups one by destroying the wall of hostility that divided them when he abolished the law of commandments and regulations in his flesh. He did this to create in himself one new person out of the two. And this way make peace. <clears throat> Verse 16. And he did this to reconcile both to God in one body through the cross by putting the hostility to death on it. He also came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. So then you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household. You have been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as a cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you two are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. That is God's word. Alleluia. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Alleluia. Please stand for our gospel lesson. <clears throat> From Mark chapter 6. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a while. For there were so many people coming and going that he did not even have a chance to eat. They went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. But many people saw them leave and knew where they were going. They ran there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. When Jesus stepped out of the boat, he saw a large crowd. His heart went out to them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. That is the loving words of our Savior Jesus. <clears throat> we'll join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. So we'll continue with the next hymn.
Maybe you've noticed that sometimes what we want is not always what we need. You can always think of that Thanksgiving feast that you get to enjoy. You may want another plate full of food or you may want another piece of dessert, but it really isn't what your, your body needs. Or you can think of the vehicles that you drive. We may want a new car every three years, but you, you, you really don't, don't need one every three years. Or those phones. I think it's up to iPhone 12 now. We may want iPhone 13, but you don't really need it. What we want is not always what we need. What we're going to see, I pray, in our gospel lesson from Mark chapter 6 is that Jesus gives you and I what he wants, and it is what we need. The first verse there. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. Jesus had instructed his disciples, and now he sent them out, the 12 of them. He sent them out to go and tell people about the Savior, that he was here, that he came to live and die for them, that he came to rise for them. He sent them out to go, who knows where, to the surrounding villages and share that message of peace and forgiveness. He sent them out. And those disciples, they were able to perform miracles, heal the sick, drive out demons. How long they were gone, we're not told, but they all came back. And when they came back, they were like children coming back from a trip, and they just wanted to tell their parents all that they had done, all that they had experienced. And that's what the disciples did. They shared with Jesus the joys that they experienced on that missionary journey that they went, how people were brought to faith, how God used them to share that word as they saw change in people's lives, to know that they were treasured and saved, not by what they had done, but by what Jesus was going to do. They got to share the excitement, Jesus, I drove out a demon, Jesus, I was able to reunite a family because that what was sick was cured and restored back to health. They got to share those joys. They no doubt also experienced some struggles as they went out and proclaimed that gospel message because the teachings of Jesus, as you know, are not always well received and sometimes met with great hostility. Perhaps they had experienced that in their journeys. And now they came back to Jesus to share. And Jesus wanted to hear and he wanted to continue to instruct them. What happened? He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a while. For there were so many people coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. They went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. But many people saw them leave and knew where they were going. They ran there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. Jesus wanted to get away with his disciples. He wanted to hear their stories. He wanted to continue to instruct them. But what Jesus wanted for his disciples was not happening. The people were flocking to them. The people were coming because they wanted now. There was 13 of them with Jesus and 12 disciples. There were 13 of them who could share that message of salvation. There were 13 of them who could now perform miracles and heal them. The lines weren't going to be as long. Jesus wanted to get away with his disciples. They needed rest. He needed rest. He wanted to get away because they needed to be taught and he wanted to hear. So they got in a boat. When Jesus stepped out of the boat, he saw a large crowd. His heart went out to them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. 
began to teach them many things. They got in that boat in the hopes of getting away, but the crowd saw where Jesus and his disciples were going, and they beat him to that spot. And when Jesus got out of that boat, there wasn't anger, there wasn't frustration. What does it tell us? His heart went out to them. Because just like in our reading from Jeremiah, they were sheep without a shepherd. Their spiritual leaders had failed them. Their spiritual leaders weren't pointing, there is the Messiah. They were like sheep without a shepherd, and Jesus was there to guide them. Jesus was there to instruct them. He was there to give them what they needed. That message of forgiveness. That message that he was there to live and die for them. Jesus. Jesus is what you and I need. You and I need that compassion of Christ in our lives. We need that heart of Jesus to go out to us. And the reason is very clear. Because you and I, sadly, more often than not, do what we want and not what God says. If you look at that reading from the book of Ephesians, you'll see two things that we're going to highlight. One is that Jew or Greek, Jew or Gentile, all are saved in the exact same way through that blood of Christ through that simple faith, through that simple trusting that Jesus died to take away your sins, through that simple trust that because Christ lives, you will live also. But that simple truth of salvation through faith in Jesus alone flies in the face of our sinful reason, flies in the face of what this sinful world would want you to believe. Because what does our nature tell us? It can't be that easy. It can't be that easy that one would die and we would all be saved. It can't be that easy that one would die and every one of our sins taken away. Our sinful mind would tell us, as well as the sinful world, that it depends on you a little bit. That the reason you are saved is because you get up and come to church. That the reason you are saved is because you do your best to follow God's Ten Commandments in your life. That the reason you are saved is because there are a whole lot worse people out there than you. And that is why God chose you. Our sinful minds tell us there must be something, even if it's small, that I do that brings me salvation. It can't all be on Jesus. The other thing that our reading from Ephesians tells us is that all of us, Jew or Gentile, Greek or, Gent Greek or Jew, whatever you want to call it, that because of Christ, we are united together. We are brothers and sisters brought into that family, brought into that household of God. We form one Christian church, that body of Christ, united. But that unity, that unity that we have in Christ is hard to maintain. It's hard to maintain in a church when we can easily look out in the pews and see, oh, they wanted that, or they voted that way. And as we look out, battle lines start to get drawn. As we look out, the unity that God wants us to have in our church, it starts to fracture, and we start to see not unity but division. We start to see groups of people instead of a group, a family. That unity is broken. We do what we want. Not what God says. We can see that in other areas of our lives as we hold grudges, as we think more highly of ourselves than we ought, as we want to sacrifice 
and put aside certain teachings of God and his church for better results. We can look at our own lives and see that we are like the children of Israel. We can be stiff-necked and stubborn in the way we live our lives. Think of your children. When they are stubborn with you, when they rebel against you, what do you as a parent do? You bring in the discipline. And that's what God says. If you want to be stubborn against me, if you want to rebel against me, I will discipline you. If you want to continue in your sinful stubbornness, if you want to continue in your rebellious ways, then just wait and see the punishment that will come your way because of your doing. Here again from Mark 6. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a while. For there were so many people coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. They went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. But many people saw them leave and knew where they were going. They ran there on foot from all the towns and ride ahead of them. When Jesus stepped out of the boat, he saw a large crowd. His heart went out to them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. At this point, what did Jesus want? He wanted to be alone with his disciples. He wanted to hear how their journey went. He wanted them and himself to have a moment to rest, to eat. They could not do it because the people flocked to him. And so in that instance, Jesus set aside his temporal want for what was truly needed, sharing that gospel message. But what Jesus wanted was not just that rest with his disciples. One of Jesus' wants is great for you, and it's great for all the people of this world. Because what is Jesus want? It is that all people be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. What does Jesus want? Not that any perish and suffer in hell. Jesus wants you. He wants you to be set free from your sins. He wants you to be set free from the fear of God's wrath. He wants you to enjoy the peace that surpasses all understanding, that wonderful message of free and full forgiveness. He wants you to experience the joys that he himself has prepared for you in heaven when this life of worry and fear is over. That is what Jesus wants. And that is what you need. And that is what Jesus accomplished for you. Jesus did what was needed by becoming that lamb, innocent and holy. By becoming that sacrifice that was needed to win you and give you full and free forgiveness. Jesus did what was needed by laying down his life for stubborn, rebellious sinners like you and me. When he went to Golgotha and showed his tremendous love for you and said, here I will give up my life to set you free, to forgive you for trying to divide, to forgive you for holding grudges, to forgive you for everything you've ever said, thought, or done. Jesus did that for you. He bled and died to save you. Jesus did all that was needed so that your sins wouldn't send you to hell. Jesus did all that was needed so that you could know that joyous kingdom that God wants you to have is yours. It's not his dream. It's not his fantasy that you have it, but it is your reality. 
because of the work Jesus did on your behalf in the gift that he now freely gives you. What Jesus wants, he has given you. What you need in his love, he has made yours. Amen. Please stand. As we'll continue with the Create in Me. We'll continue with prayer. Almighty God, we praise and honor your holy name for your numerous acts of love and mercy on behalf of your people. We especially thank you for the gift of your one and only Son, who has ascended into heaven and sits at your right hand. We rejoice in the knowledge that he is our advocate before your throne and that he intercedes for us in all our needs. Send your Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds with understanding and knowledge of your heavenly truths. Give to all who serve your holy church a full measure of your grace, that Christ may be confessed, his cross uplifted, and his gospel declared as the only way to eternal life. Bless all parents that they may be wholesome examples to their children. May they teach their children to love you, to practice virtue, to desire to pursue instruction in your word, to serve your church and all people. Hear the prayers of all who are afflicted in the quiet hour of the night, when they are weighed down with pain, loneliness, and anxiety. Bring them strength and hope by assuring them that your love endures, your power overcomes, and your presence remains constant. Lord God, we join with Dorothy and Marvin Gruelke in thanking you for 67 years of blessings on their marriage this coming Saturday. Be with them in the future as you have been in the past and continue, and continue to fill their hearts and their home with your love. Lord God, you have given us the sacrament of holy baptism where you promised us the removal of sins and the being brought into your family. In between our services this morning, we get to use this sacrament on Walker Trexler. May your loving promise in this sacrament assure Walker and his parents that he is forgiven and that he is your child because of his Savior, Jesus. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private prayers. As we leave this hour of worship, we give all glory to Jesus. To him be praise and honor and glory and power now and forever. Amen. And we'll join the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. <clears throat> as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. So we'll continue with hymn 449.
we pray? Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read them, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and always give you his peace.